morning. How's everyone? All right, we have, this is, I hate to even jinx this. We're being so successful with video and audio anymore. Since I've quit stressing about my Facebook videos and just stuck to this. So welcome, I'm Diane from Boho Stamper. Um, we are doing some paper crafting fun on a Friday, a snowy Friday. Um, a little prayer for those folks in Alabama that got a tornado. Well, we're struggling through ice and snow and then a tornado goes through the south. Somebody needs to rain Mother Nature and she's gone a little, she's gone a little wild here. <clears throat> so, happy Friday. I hope everybody's doing well and you're all staying safe through whatever weather you're enduring. Um, last week, oh, I was going to grab that. Last week, we made this card that was a pop-up birthday card. Am I on screen? Um, oh, I got the wrong screen on the front here, and I can't tell where I'm at. There we go. Okay, now I can see. Anyways, we did a pop-up on the inside of a card, and I linked that video below in the description box so that if you missed that and you want to go back and see how to make this, um, it, it's there for you. I actually still have my instructions sitting here because I wanted to make another one, but I have not had time. So, but during that video, I think I mentioned too that I had this die set, and this is um, Honey Bee Dies. It's called A2 Surprise Box Card Base, and I did check this. It is still available through um, Honey Bee. Simon Says Stamp, and I think I found it on Buffalo Stamps. I, I added the links to those three places as well if you're interested in this. So, even if you don't have this die, because it does look a little intimidating when you first get it. Um, actually, these are all um, stuck together when you first get it, and you have to snip them apart. So be careful doing that, because they, they can leave some little sharp edges. But then it looks a little intimidating, because you have all these pieces and don't know what to do. And I think that's probably why I didn't use it for a while, because... I didn't have the time to sit down and pay attention to it, but since I've retired, I mean, it's taken me almost a year to get to this one, but here I am. The die is still available, so if you watch this and you say, oh, I want to do that, you can still go get it and then come back and watch the video again. And if you have it and you want to you want to play along or you're back reviewing, a hint that you may not know you can do when you're watching a video, if if you're watching something and you're trying to catch up, if you hit your space bar on a laptop, it will pause the video. And then you can hit the space bar again to resume right where you left off. And that way you have a chance to catch up to where the demonstrator is showing you the next steps. So, I found that helpful when I was doing um, a book binding class. And they were teaching us how to do the stitches on the sides of the books that we made and um, sometimes I wanted to review it so I would hit the space bar and maybe just back arrow a little bit and see what they did again and then hit the space bar and it would play so helpful so here's today's card and I wanted to show you that it does fit into just a regular A2 envelope this was my first one and so my one little heart is a little bit outside of the box over here but it still managed to make it in the if you can see it here it still managed to make it in the envelope so when your recipient gets this and they go to open it it pops up I bought it and so this is their this is their surprise box and you can make your little inside pieces as detailed or as simple as you like um, since this was my first one and I was practicing these are pretty pretty simple punches and die cuts you could stamp and die cut little animals and then you know use your alcohol markers to color them all in do a whole circus theme do um, a, a bouquet of flowers you could do birds in a garden whatever but I'm still I'm, I'm on Valentine's right now so and I suppose I could have decorated these a little bit more. But the paper I'm using today um, already kind of does that for me. So then you just 
close it back up and it lies flat and you can put it back in your envelope. So how's that for a cute little surprise box? I, I really liked this when I first saw it come out and I don't even know how long ago it was. This also does not have a year on it. Mm -mm. No year, oh well. So for my sample card, I was using the um, Simply Marvelous paper again that's free through the end of February and Stampin' Up! when you place a $50 order. And I think I, I love this paper. I just, the colors on it are so pretty. I don't know that I'm so much into the, um, the satiny looking sides of them. They're okay, but I really like this marbly looking side. And I think I have a couple packets of it, thank goodness. Because once celebration is over, these won't be around anymore. Oh, go back in. I like to keep it clean. So that's what I used on um, my sample, along with sam with just little scraps of purple paper that I had. So there's a variety of color of papers here. I know I have Highland Heather and Gorgeous Grape, and I have no idea what this is. It was just in my scrap box, and so I added some more purples to it. So for the card that we're going to make. It's not a card, is it? It's a box. I'm going to make a box. I'm using some retired colors also because, you know, the whole point of this um, paper crafting on a Friday is to use up the stuff that I have in my stash. I need to use this stuff. I can't just stay here. I can't save it. I'm not getting younger. So, our first... And I did... Go ahead and die cut these just to save some time. You, you know how to use a big shot into your die cuts. And I have my little cheat sheet here that tells me what I need. So out of this big die, you need two of these. One and two. This is actually an insert or a bridge. This is the middle part of the card. These pieces in here that will hold our pop-ups. And so you need at least three of these if you're feeling brave and you want to stick a fourth one in there, go for it. I was good with three. Okay, that's this piece. So I have one, two, and three. So those will be my, my inserts. And then we need our decorative pieces for the top over here. There are two dies. One is a large die with a solid cut. And I don't think I kept out my I had some spares cut. I don't know where I put them. And the other die is a little bit smaller and makes a stitched edging on it. I don't know if you can see the little bumps around here. So that's going to make a stitched edging. And so you don't have to layer your card up as much as I did for your box. You can just do one panel. You don't have to put any layers on if you don't want to. So the straight edged layer went on first, and then out of a coordinating color, I cut the stitch edge one and layered it on top. And I'm going to do that again. So you'll need four of each of those, whatever you decide you're going to use. If you're going to use just the bottom layer, you need four of them. If you're going to use the bottom and the top, you'll need eight pieces all together. And you could use just the stitched edge panel and lay that on top. With the little roll ups, that would be pretty too. This die is to cut the extenders out of acetate, or you can use cardstock. Again, remember we save these off of our um, off of our stamp sets. When we get the stamp sets and we peel them off the acetate, you know I kind of always recommend that you save these, and this is a 
this is another way to use them. So now I gotta remember how to do this. All right, so these are the sides of the box. And I have cut little panels out of some decorative paper. My decorative paper I'm using is from a retired Stampin' Up um, package. It's called Love You Always. I don't know if this was last year or the year before. Oops, there we go. And those fit on here two inches by two and three quarter inches. Okay, and they'll fit right into these little sides. Yep, they really do. Okay, I couldn't tell there for a minute. That one looks a little bit, are they the same size? I cut them the same. Okay, they are. <laughs> oh, here's some extra pieces. They're not the, oh yes. Oh, these are the solid scallop pieces. <clears throat> I guess I don't have an extra one with the stitching around it. And this was an extra extender because I didn't know if I was going to use three or four. And then a couple little die cut hearts that I had left over. A couple more different shades of purples there. I like purple. Okay, so I think when I did my sample, I put the box together first, but I'm going to add my decorative panels on here before I put the box together. If you're using a directional pattern, and I guess these do kind of have their little flowers on them, so make sure that your um, design is in the up position. You know, you don't want your... Okay. Come on your flowers to be upside down. There we go. And I kind of did that when I cut my scallops out as well. When I laid my die on the paper, I looked at it with the scallops going facing me, thinking this is how the flaps are going to fold down. So I made sure that if there was a flower on there, that flower was facing up. I mean, there are some coming down towards me also, but if there was a focal point of a flower on here, I tried to make it so it was going to be facing up when the box is open. Okay, so let's get putting these little thingies together. I think I'm going to use my silicone mat so I don't get glue all or tape runner all over my cardboard. I start running out of cardboard pieces to do my work on, but I'll be sticky. I made these with just a really teeny tiny border. Maybe I should have cut them a little bit smaller. I don't know. I like small borders. Make how you like it. I'm just using tape runner to put these decorative panels on. We're going to use double sided tape to hold the box together though because it's a bit stronger. You don't really want the box to fall apart. Um, you could use a uh, liquid glue, um, let's see, Tombow or uh, art litter glue, anything like that will work. Now, let's just score our little edges. These are going to fold down towards us. And we'll do the same on our second part of the box. Again, the scalloped edge is going to fold towards us.
And I think I'm going to put, trying to think of my, my um, method yesterday. I think I put all those pieces on after I had the box together, but I do think it's just easier to get them all put on before we put the box together. So let's do that. We have our stitched ed edge, <laughs> stitched edged scalloped pieces. And we have our straight edge scalloped pieces. So I'm going to add one to each one of those. Because we still need some time here to um, figure out what, I haven't cut anything for the inside of the pop-up box yet. So I'll need some um, hearts or whatever I can put in there. So there's one. And my stamp that I'm using and my dies that I'm using is the Stampin' Ups Love and Happiness set. And it we did do um, a card with that also that has a hybrid embossing folder. So you can emboss and die cut your shape at the same time. So I don't, I have no affiliation with Honey Bee. It's just a die set that I had gotten that I like. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. So if you uh, have questions or need products for that, you can always reach out to me or visit my Boho Stamper website. And um, there's a link in there that can get you to Stampin' Up! products and you can check out everything that I'm using other than this paper. I'm using leftovers. Just thinking this through before I put stuff on here and then it will be too late. <laughs> so my box is standing up like this and my flap is coming forward. My scallops are on this side. I started up, I started with uh, Stampin' Up! because I wanted to, well, I had used their products and I love their stamps. I think that their stamps have, are, are a great quality. Um, they make beautiful impressions and I really like them. So I do have a lot of stamp I had before I started being a, a demonstrator. I had a lot of Stampin' Up! stuff anyway. I would look for them at garage sales or flea markets or on eBay or wherever until I found an official demonstrator. And then after a couple years, um, I thought, well, I better do something to help support my habit here. So becoming a demonstrator, I got a bit of a discount and, and you get like a heads up on some of the new products and chances to order those before they're available to everyone. So it, it's been pretty rewarding for me so far. I like it. But I'm not out to make a career. I am out to just continue paper crafting because I like it. And if you watch my channels, now I'm going to use my double-sided tape here for these tabs and we're going to connect the two box pieces together. Worry more about lining up your bottom edges. Don't worry about your top edges so much because it's the bottom when we fold this all together. We want it to sit flat on the table. So just be careful when you go to line these up that you're getting your bottoms as straight as you can. Um, there's a little line there where we scored and folded and so Stay inside of that score line if possible. What was I saying about stamping it? Oh, oh, I was going to say so if you've watched my channel, you also know that I like to. Um, about a year ago or so, I started also making um, junk journals and. As I said, I, I did a class on how to make 
books and do the book binding and things like that. So I could use some of my leftover papers, and it's been very fun, too. I, I like that. Right now I'm in the middle of an Alice in Wonderland journal. And I started, and I was thinking today, I should have probably done that on the video as well. <clears throat> um, and only take the tape off of one piece. Leave the other one for right now. We'll do our inserts, and then we'll worry about getting the box put together all the way. Um, so some of the swaps that I do with other people who make journals. I really didn't have anywhere to put my, my pages that I make or anything. And it's kind of slowed me down in making them because I don't know what to do with them once I have them done. So here's how our box is going to look <clears throat> once we get everything together. Pretty. Very pretty. And it will lay flat when we put it into the envelope. And we're going to work on our insides. Okay. So I did grab some papers and started making my signatures for... I'm going to make myself an art journal and just put all of my my stuff that I make, you know, with other folks in there so they have somewhere to keep them. Okay, so we have our three inserts. I'm going to fold my panels and score each one. I'll go over them with my bone folder and I'll add double-sided tape to each panel, not taking the release paper off yet. So, yesterday I got all of my pages in order for that that I wanted. I don't have them sewn together yet. I guess it's not too late. I could do a video on that. I also made book cloth that I'm going to cover my my little book with, which is a really cool material. I like it. And then I have my swap project that I made from Jeannie in Missouri. And I have Sonia from Ireland. I have my items there and I'm ready to make my project, but I didn't have anywhere to put them. That was what prompted the whole journal thing. And who else are, um, oh, uh, J, is it JD, I think? from Florida. I think it's my third one. Sorry, I can't remember. Uh, and that one I'm actually excited to do too because it's got like bright summery colors, watermelon, things like that, and who can't use a little sunshine right now? Right? I am personally very tired of the snow. And I know we've not really had a bad winter, but I don't like winter. <laughs> I don't like being cold. I don't like shoveling. I know I was a little rushed getting in here today because I went out to shovel a path for the dogs again. And when hubby gets home, he'll he'll use the snowblower and do our, we have a long driveway and he'll go over the dog's path and everything again. But they had to have somewhere to get out this morning, right? So I always shovel a path down the front porch and into the yard, which they can't really get too far into. And, um, and usually I shovel off the deck, but I haven't got that far today because the snow is really heavy. And so I decided to go stand under a hot shower and take some Tylenol and try to nip it in the bud before my back starts today. Okay, so we can use that little die to cut those extenders out, or I can just cut some strips. And I'm just going to cut some strips because I don't know how many I'm going to need and I don't know how long I want them to be. So I'm just cutting, oh, I don't know, one, two, maybe like three-eighths of an inch strips. And then they just snip with scissors, you know, this is not um, hard acetate. I wouldn't use the kind that that like cracks and breaks. This is like you can use acetate from produce containers, but some of those are that hard kind, and when you bend them, they snap. So 
I just save all of my acetate from stamps. That's one, do I have one that I'm not? Oh, I probably didn't use the tulip one yet because that is coming up. Mm -hmm. Sure. I put everything together with my tulip paper, not tulips, daffodils. Where did I put all my daffodil stuff? Because that's my Monday uh, card, my Stampin' Up! video that I do on Mondays. We're going to use the new daffodil set. They have a ton of dyes in there, and I kind of wanted to, well, that's going to be hard to play with them if I can't remember where I put them. Does anyone else lose stuff, or is it just me? I mean, really, how far can it go? We're all in one room. Anyway, um, that's what this is. I just peel the acetate. There's got to be a stamp set here that I can show you. Have I really used them all? I possibly have. I don't think I used Awesome Otters too much, but I took the stamps off, and that one's not... No, I used the Dahlia one. No, I did. Oh, well, you know what I mean. <laughs> you know what I mean. So just cut some of those. All right. And if you don't have acetate, you can use cardstock. It works just as well. When we put these on here, we want to um, we put our little decorations on. Be careful of what adhesive you're using because since it is acetate, you're going to see it. I'm going to use glue dots. Glue dots are pretty strong, at least the ones I'm using from Stampin' Up! are strong enough that they hold my acetate in place and they don't look too crappy behind um, if you happen to see something. So, like on the back of our hearts, you can see the little glue dots there, but they're not bad. They don't, they don't show up too awfully bad and because I am doing Valentine's we are going to do hearts again uh, and I'm going to cut a few hearts out of the two different pinks I think I will stamp on my lighter pinks here and I'll tell you a fast way to do like what I made on my first one. I used just some heart punches. And if you're wondering about my colors that I'm using, my colors of choice, uh, again, are retired colors. Well, Blushing Bride is not retired, but the other one is called Rococo Rose, and it is retired. Keep that because I might need a little bit of a stamp. And then I had a solid color, a solid punch as well. And these are good for layering. Not sure how we're going to layer these yet. Oh, I know. I want those to cut out the little hearts. And this was the Rococo Rose. This is a really pretty color. I'm actually very surprised that it retired. Kind of like a, a mauve. You know me. I have to have extras here so I have options. I think I want to layer the light ones on the dark, but I might change my mind. Love punches. They're so quick. Alright, so we have some big hearts there. I have my inserts. I'm going to do a couple um, 
small hearts. Oh, there's another panel. Oh, that's still not a stitched one, though. I wanted to show you the stitched size in comparison to the other. Oh, well. I guess she kind of got that when we put the layers together, huh? Get my... Oh, you know what? I'm going to put these honeybee dies back in here because I'm going to take my bouquet of love dies out and I don't want to start getting things mixed up. So let's just slide these back into the pocket. I'm already missing one, the little acetate cutter. Bouquet of Love. I think, did I use that one? I did use one of those. This is a little large. I don't really know. We have to be careful, remember, when we close up the box that our hearts stay inside of the scalloped edges. So, that one. Hmm, I don't think it is. I think, maybe it is. Maybe it is. Oh, it has to be because the other ones are smaller. So let's cut a couple different hearts out of the pink. Oh, I wonder if I have pink foil. I bet I do. I think I do. Yes, wouldn't that be pretty to put like a pink foil heart on the front? And see, this large heart is the one that goes inside that hybrid embossing folder, and it makes a stitched outline if you can see it on here. So if you're doing another card, um, you could use that on your front panel and have some stitching on there. Well, at least one more small one out of here. Yes, my eyes are wandering over to my envelope here with my foils in it, my um, metallic papers. little birds everywhere. I spent some time yesterday morning when filled out all the bird filled up all the bird feeders because they're fluttering around everywhere looking for food. Poor things. The little kitties watch it that birds don't have anything to eat. And there were a lot. Yesterday. I told my husband I was so surprised. I looked across the street in front of the neighbor's house. The one tree was just filled with birds. I don't know if they were... I mean, there's plenty of food here. Foil oh, foils. Ha, ha, ha. 
I thought there was coordinating paper when we had that. Um, love you always. Did I not use this, or was I really good about sealing it all up? Oh, my fingers don't want to work. Yeah. I know I used some of it. Oh yeah, this had the Sahara sand and the pink. I didn't use this package, but I must have another package because I know I used some of this before. All right, let me cut a strip of this off of here to we'll cut some foil hearts. I don't want to put the whole sheet, half a sheet through here because um, How big do I need this? About three inches. When you put your foil sheets through your cut and emboss machine, you are very likely to get indentations in your foil from marks that you might have on your plates. And so, unless you have dedicated plates for foil, and I used to, but I've used my plates so much now that I don't have special ones anymore. Um, I'm probably going to have impressions from this. What if I put just a piece of <clears throat> copier paper on top if I can protect it a little bit better? I have some scrap sheets here. Let's try that and see if I don't really want to have all those marks from my my cutting plate on the foil. Let's see what happens. Well, that might have helped a little bit. Just do, I think that's going to be too big for the front. So I'll just do, oh, what the heck, D, go for it. One big one, one more big one, one more small one. And then we should have enough to play with. We'll stamp our Valentine greeting on the front and put it together. so dry and staticky even my even my scrap paper sticks oh. the size that also has um, we could add a little greeting inside a die and have that popped up. Although I kind of like it on my, although it's going to depend on which stamp I use. Yeah, because this one, the Happy Valentine's Day friend, that one just looked pretty on the heart. So, how about, let's see. So if I want to use Valentine greetings, you know what, am I missing a die? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I am. I'm missing the big die. Oh. Because <laughs> I took it out to show you. That fits over Valentine greetings. So maybe we'll do that. Okay. We'll stamp Valentine greetings on the light pink with a darker pink ink. Oh, I can get it open. And get one of those scrap papers first so that we can make sure we're stamping evenly. I 
really didn't know how good this ink was. I don't know if I had a refill for this and refilled it. Oof, I didn't get that one very good, did I? Oh, and you know what? You can't really stamp on the back of this, because you're going to see it. So, is my die going to fit? Well, if I'm careful. If I was careful, I'd have done it right the first time. And then maybe on the front, we can put one of the smaller ones. Oh, maybe I could use, hmm, I don't know, a little frilly for hubby. I was going to say I could make this for my husband. Hmm. Let's see, is that going to, hopefully miss the stamped piece that I did first. Got my new plate for my my baby boss, so he's happy again. I replaced the cracked one. Ooh, that's nice. I like how this makes a little bit of a raised border around the die cut on that that set. Has a little bit of a beveled edge. It's very pretty. Okay, let's. Oh, we need our inserts. Here they are. So, I guess we have to put our inserts in first here. And we're going to start with. We're going to start with the panel that we already have glued together. And we're going to keep our three inserts on this panel. I'll, I'll, you don't want to put one here, one here, one here, one here, because when you put your box together, it will not work. We want our inserts to go from side to side, so we'll start just on this one. And remove one of the release papers. Did I take the wrong one off? Let's see how I did this one. Oh, that was good here. Yes, I did do this side first, I guess. Because I wanted my panels all facing the back. I don't know if that matters, but it just worked for me. So I will use the one tab and line it up not too close to the front. And I'm calling my score line the front. So I'm going to line this up just a little inside of that score line and try to keep my bottom even. Again, so that when we stand this up, we have a nice solid base. And just press that in. And I'll take my next one and line this fold up behind my first one. Trying to keep my bottom even. And one more. We'll take this fold, line it up to the tab edge of the previous one. And my first one I had moved this over towards my fold line a little bit more, and it's kind of close to the back side of the box. So <clears throat> this one, I'm just going to try to line it up evenly also against the tab or close to it. Okay, now we can take off our other release papers and the sticky tape.
if you have any overhang of your tape there, just fold it back up onto the tab so that it's not hanging onto your box. You don't want to glue the box shut. Fold it over. So now we have all three tabs glued along here, and I'm going to close my card. Is this right? I'm so scared to do this. Isn't that how I did it? Didn't I just close that? Yes. Okay. So close the card. <laughs> Panic! Panic moment! I don't remember. I mean, it was only yesterday. And when we open it up. Oh, that's right. Thank you, thank you. It's a little bit close again. I should really... Oh, maybe it was my front one that I had too close the first time. I was thinking it was the back one. Now we can take the tab off of this last... Or we can take the release paper off the last tab. And... Little overhang. Close the card up there. And just give everything a nice press. And there's our box. So now, because I did make that a little close to the back again, I'm going to make that the back of my, my box. Oh, it wouldn't matter because I, I'm thinking now because my box, or I sealed my box shut, I kind of want that in the back, I guess. So that's okay. All right. Now we just have to decide how we want to line up our, our little pop-ups. I found it easiest when I was doing this to keep my box closed like this and line up my acetate and keep my cutout pieces inside the scallop edge glue dots. So how about we'll put our Valentine greeting towards the front. I put my greeting in the center section on my trial one, and I think I would prefer it was on the front section, the first insert. And so I can make that pop clear up to the edge of, oh, my own screen barely, so I'm sorry. I can make this pop up clear up to the scallops. I'm just gonna hold it with my finger and cut a little bit below that so that I have room. I guess I can keep those at home. And I think I will put. Oh, I gotta pick up the card. I can't pick this stuff up. My hands are so dry. Well, let's get this one on here first. This opens up. That's gonna be there. Okay. Blue dot on the front of the acetate. I guess I should move it in a little bit. I got it hanging over the edge of the flap. And I do want it to fit in a box, or in a box, in an envelope. And so there's our first one. Now I can add additional decorations. So I think I will put a couple of hearts there. Oh, that'd be cute. Okay. Again, just using glue dots to adhere these to the acetate strips. 
and your finger. I did. I have one on my finger. There's another one on my finger, my thumb. And just double check every once in a while, like that glue dot is there. Opening it up and making sure that your design is going to be the way you want it. And my second. piece of acetate. I don't know what to call these. I think, um, well, I think I'm going to put the big foil one in the back. Ooh. Put a couple of glue dots on this guy because he's pretty big. And measure how far up can this part go? No more than there. So I have another glue on in my thumb. <laughs> oh my goodness. I don't know why they're sticking to my thumbs. Okay, so there. I'm going to put my glue dots on the front of this one so that I can tuck it behind our insert. There's a couple again. Make sure that it stays in there. Uh, I can't see you. There you are. And I want it as far to the left and as high as I can get it, keeping it inside my box. And now I think I will make a layered heart. I'll put my light pink and the dark pink. Oh, you know what would be pretty? I have that old, does this say love on it? Love you lots. That would be pretty. Hmm. Will that fit on here? Oh, I think it will. This is um, an older stamp set by Stampin' Up! And it is called Heartfelt. I don't know how old that one is, to be honest. Had that for a while. Oh, and look what it's on. An acetate sheet. I was looking all over to show you an acetate sheet. So if you were to peel this off of here and have this leftover sheet, this one actually has the stamps on it, so I wouldn't use this one. But um, this is the acetate that I'm using on my, my little pop-ups. Boy, is this ink pad tight. This one to a pop up.
Just little lollipops, huh? And this is going to go in my middle section. Do you like my great way of measuring? Somehow, I would like to have some little ones down there to kind of fill in the spaces behind what we already have. So, let me see here. Make sure that the box will close okay. There. And oops, do I have another short piece left over? as well use them up. I cut them, so I may as well use them. That's the whole point. So, there were a few boxes of these glue dots that, um, <laughs> They have glue dots on the front and on the back of the release paper. So that's why every once in a while, I, when I pull my hand away, I have glue dots. That's why. There, I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. So here's our closed one. I'm going to put something on the front here. And when we open it up, love you lots, Valentine greetings. I think I'm putting... Just like that. Easy, easy peasy. So I hope if you have this die set and you haven't used it because it's been a little bit intimidating, I hope I was able to help make it a little clearer because now actually that I've done a couple, it's not difficult. It really, um, once you know how many pieces, that you need cut of everything, it's not hard to put together. You just have to think about it, you know. And especially, I would imagine, if you're going to do a little scene, like I said, with flowers or birds or animals or something, you're going to kind of want to lay it out before you start gluing everything together and make sure that you have all of your pop-up pieces in the right place. <laughs> I love this little tie set. Why did I not use this before? Aww. Look at that. And so you could add, if you wanted to, you could add more decorations. I'm not going to. More on the front. You could add little um, gemstones or you know, I have like some little candy heart looking embellishments. You could add all of those. But I really like this. So there we are. That was our paper crafting fun today. And it's Friday, so you have a whole weekend to go make some Valentines and get those ready to send. Make people smile. Um, I'm so happy that you stopped by and joined me today for this. And I do hope that it helped you if you had any questions about that die, if you happen to have it. And as I mentioned in my description box, there are links if you're interested in purchasing that die set. So have fun, everybody. Have a great weekend. Don't get snowed in, but stay warm and go craft while you're in there. Bye.